In life, we encounter a diverse cast of characters. Among the cast that surrounds us, there are characters that particularly stand out, such as energy vampires. These are individuals who knowingly or unknowingly sap our vitality and leave us feeling drained. These individuals aren't confined to our social circles. They can also reside within us, manifesting as counterproductive thoughts and our internal conflicts. I think the key to a peaceful life lies in our ability to manage our energy wisely when we intentionally choose where we focus our attention. Imagine an alarm clock that goes off constantly, and it doesn't really serve an actual purpose. It's just begging for attention and probably being more than a little unsettling to you. That's kind of what an energy vampire is, metaphorically at least. Have you ever found yourself multitasking to the point of distraction? Or you're caught maybe in a, a, a moment where you're trying to meditate or think and it's been hijacked by a barrage of, barrage of unrelated thoughts. This internal battle not only zaps our focus, but also our enjoyment of the present moment. Those thoughts, they're energy vampires. I personally find that thought loop exhausting. The other thing is that the company we keep can significantly impact our energy levels. Close your eyes and reflect on the people who invigorate you, those whose presence motivates you. On the flip side, consider those company that leaves you feeling drained after every interaction, whether it be from negativity, or maybe their complaints, or just those hard-to-handle egos. So I want to talk about and identify some common energy vampires. Energy vampires come in various forms. And recognizing them is really your first step to reclaiming your energy and your peace. Because we only get so much energy in a 24-hour day. The first is the complainer. This type thrives on negativity and turns every conversation into an opportunity to vent, usually leaving me emotionally spent. You can set healthy boundaries with these types of energy vampires while still being a good friend. The second type is the narcissist. They demand constant attention, perhaps admiration, and they can drain our emotional reserves. The third is the victim. They're trapped in self-pity, and they offload their burdens onto anyone that will take them, and they certainly impede our own emotional space. So it's important to protect our well-being. Our well it's crucial to establish boundaries, learn to say no, and prioritizing our mental health over our relationships with energy vampires is key. Let's face it, some of these, some of those that are energy vampires are family, they're dear friends, they're business partners, they're neighbors, they're all around us. So take a second and pause. You do not have to engage, be dragged into the drama, or even participate. You have the right and can develop the skills to emotionally detach yourself. You're not being rude, you're rather practicing equanimity. You're practicing mental calmness in the face of adversity. So you have a choice. Don't allow yourself to get to that place of resentment, anger, and martyrdom. Don't engage. So beyond the external factors, we've got to also manage the, em the energy vampires within our minds. If you're like me, you have competing thoughts, doubts, fears. They can all exhaust our mental health. And much like a physical exertion, they wear out the body. That's why, you know, sometimes working a desk job is just as hard as digging with a shovel. So how exactly do we protect ourselves from ourselves, from our internal energy vampires? For me, it's about slowing down, rest, space, meditation, mindfulness, self-reflection. They're very potent anecdotes to the internal chaos. So being aware of our thought patterns, we can channel our mental energy towards more positive and productive pursuits rather than letting it be siphoned off by these internal distractions. Life is far too precious to be overshadowed by energy vampires. My challenge to you is to make a conscious effort to identify those draining influences, whether in your circles or within yourself, and take active steps to minimize their impact. So start this week to begin to uncover those hidden drains on your energy, establish firm boundaries, and cultivate positive habits that nurture a more balanced and enjoyable life. In doing so, 
you can ensure your life is filled with the vibrancy and peace you deserve. A few years back, I started Outside Insights really as a platform to do good. The pandemic was raging. It was a time of confusion, angst, and it kind of triggered some creativity where, for me, I was constantly spending time with either entrepreneurial business clients or the workforce. And there were problems, problems with people not necessarily being where they want to be in life. So the irony is, is uh, Outside Insights and my book, Opposite the Crowd, which I co-authored with my dad, Alan Burkhardt, were kind of born together as Alan was some of those early guests and those Guest shows turned into chapters of our book. It was an audio book first. It can be found anywhere you listen to audio books or listen to podcasts. It's, it's out in both. But I did want to share for those of you that are interested in reading our story. And there really is some great stuff about helping you have the life you want, uh, helping you work on leadership or master change. Um, there's some great stuff in there. And that book is now available. It's uh, available in a hardback uh, from Amazon, and the Kindle as well as Audible versions are up. And uh, I ask that you just, you know, you're on Amazon anyway, ordering uh, stuff for the house. Check out Opposite the Crowd and let me know what you think. Thank you. <laughs>